Call the meeting to order September 10th, 2019, the Hopkinton Conservation Commission at the Hopkinton Senior Center. So, Don, we have some documents to sign. Yeah, and uh, we, you guys signed a couple at the last meeting. We were able to issue one of them, and one of them was still reviewing that supplemental information. So, okay. Uh, Matt is still working on it. And we've got an extension permit, and we've got two certificate of compliances. I think um, Matt's memos went out yep. to you guys earlier. So it seems pretty straightforward. I agree. Okay, a few new applications filed for Fox Hollow. Yeah, we'll be gearing those up for the next meeting. Okay. And 20 Winter Street, that's a request for a CSC. Two requests for CSC, okay. Okay, Stonebrook LLC, 31 Stony Brook Road. This is a project change request. Good evening, Mr. Mark. Good evening. We were before the board about a year or so ago. Mm -hmm. uh, same owner, 31 uh, Stonebrook LLC. Um, previous plan is that. What one's at the top of the page? Uh, house in the uh, orange. Mm -hmm. Driveway to the right hand side, system on the front, retaining wall on the front, uh, recharging it in the back uh, with the deck. Okay. Uh, house is under construction. Um, selected a different uh, style septic system. Okay. A little bit smaller, a little bit shallower, less grading in the front. Um, no retaining wall? No retaining wall. Recharge is in the same spot. Deck got a little smaller, small little landing in the back. With the patio and a walkway uh, to the to the driveway. Okay. Limit of work remains the same. All right. I think that looks pretty straightforward. Yep. Comments from the commission. I got a motion to approve the project change request as discussed. Move. Second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed. Great. Okay. And then we have Vias 33 Stony Brook Road, also a project change request. Uh, right next door. Uh, no project change, original filing. Uh, small little wetlands on the lot you just heard, right here on the bottom. 25, 50, and 100. Septic in the back. In the, in the back. Uh, driveway along the left side. Mm -hmm. uh, the vision is a house that's 20 feet shorter. So the house now is completely out of the buffer zone. Driveway is a little bit uh, wider, septic remains the same, one bit of work remains the same. Okay. Retaining wall here and here minimizes some grading. So, so the pretty retaining good change. walls are newly proposed? New proposed, right. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Again, I think it looks pretty straightforward. Questions, comments from the commission? I get a motion to approve the project change request. So moved. Second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? Okay. Very good. All right, so now, Dave, you're supposed to say pleasure doing business. I have maybe one more. <laughs> Thank you, though. <laughs> Thanks. West Elm Realty Trust, 52 West, or excuse me, 42 West Street. This is also a project change request. Is that meant to be West, 42 it's West Elm? West Elm. Sorry. Yeah, sorry for the typo. typo. Sorry. No. I'll pick that up before. 42 West Elm Street. Okay, so we'll, if you want to hold off on that, Heritage. Yeah, we can go. We can go. Which which, which other one are you doing? Oh, okay. Do you want to uh, on the back page? Yeah, Gary Sunizi Foundation, 36 Stony Brook Road. Project change request on the public forum request. Gary 
getting your exercise tonight. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, almost across the street, uh, we were here about a year or so ago where we had proposed a pool and a patio in the back. Mm -hmm. um, house on the buffer, retaining wall, retaining wall, uh, well in the backyard. System here and side load right. Uh, we are now working for a foundation for a wounded veteran that's going to live here. I believe this is going to be a one story. So we're 26 feet longer in house. Um, different style house in that normal side load, front load, very flat. Everything's very flat. Retaining wall here, retaining wall here. If you add up all the impervious areas, driveway, house, pool and patio with 1,600 square feet less with this one, but the house being longer. Okay, and there's no pool proposed? No pool proposed. Okay. Yeah, so we have a deck here, and then the house, driveway, one stair, uh, walk out, uh, very flat from here to here. Uh, okay. Larger wall, but it saved us quite a bit. All right, questions, comments from the commission? Bring in a motion to approve the project change request as discussed. So Approved. moved. In the second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And opposed? Great. Thank okay, you. very good. good. Short evening for you. Go. <laughs> Put that Heritage Properties, portion of Zero Wilson Street. Review comments received. August 26, 2019. This is regarding the sampling regime, Don. Right. Um, sorry I didn't get those comments out to you guys till today. Uh, yeah. I don't know if anyone got a chance to look at that. Mm -hmm. I can uh, bring it up. But basically, the um, um, the gist of it was the the complaint was the the, the third party sampling. The the second lab report we got had a one sediment. Um, um, test, which was the, the organic stockpile that got that got stripped and, and brought out of the out of the buffer zone. Mm -hmm. Then the other two were the uh, were the water samples because the uh, um, the sediment was you know, in the in a in the water column. So when we right. got suggestion, and basically it was all drawn from from the board of health directors' uh, suggestions because when we were out there reviewing the the initial um, uh, where the sediment had reached uh, the reservoir. And we had um, all, all the people out. He was he knew of uh, the other site, not not the heritage site, but the Pulte site mm -hmm. had you know um, pesticides in the soils. That was you know, and the assumption on that on that site as well as the, the pesticides were bound in the organic layer and didn't really uh, didn't really infiltrate to the to the lower soils. Right. So yeah. um, so in essence, the first test the commission received from uh, uh, Peter Bemis, the, the consultant's um, um, review engineer. He took the, sam the soil samples from the two basins, and then the commission had asked for, well, okay, let's just get the same test done by a third party. So I think the third party probably looked at the previous test and said, well, why don't I do the, why don't I test the, the organic soil that Peter didn't test, and I'll do the, the water that he didn't, yeah, the stockpile, yeah. and I'll do the water that he didn't do. So in essence, all the information is, is kind of there over the two. When I brought that to the Board of Health um, um, Director Sean's attention, I go, basically you were looking for, because that was his assumption, and they just wanted the applicant to show that, and in fact, the assumption was correct, that, that, and, uh, and Board of Health had already done another test on that on that um, stockpile as well. And the, Findings were, were similar. Everything was, even everything that was in the um, in the organic layer wasn't at a reportable level. There was it was it's background. It was, it was yeah, it was detected, but it didn't go over the reportable level. So right. Right. he was yeah. amenable with that. I think the commission was amenable with that, but the the, the comments we got, the, they they wanted it all in one third party yeah. report. Okay. And does the commission think they need to go back? do a third you know I guess that's the that's the gist of it that's the gist of it mm -hmm. mr. chairman uh, so Donna you may have said this but is this a composite sample of the stockpile or just one grabs is it like one sample of one spot or yeah if you guys see I know we sent out the lab reports back in, in July and I know you guys get a chance to look at that and I think it was a composite sample 
my memory serves, yeah. Yeah, that he took from the stockpile, and the other ones were grab samples. Yeah, okay. But I can, uh, I can send that, those, uh, I think I included the, the uh, both lab reports in the email I sent out today. So if you guys want to review it again and think you want to discuss it again, we can put it on for the, for the next meeting. Or if you guys are satisfied with everything, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I was satisfied with the sampling that was done. Um, I realized that the consultant didn't go back and resample the same locations that Peter Bemis did, but he sampled two other locations. I went through the results. They were background or below detection. I didn't have a problem with it. You know, I'll leave it up to the other commission members to uh, weigh in as well. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, I think the matter is resolved at this point. Any other? Looks to me. I'm fine. I'm okay. Okay. All right, so I think we're all set, Don. Okay. On that. All righty. So, MG Kane, I think we're all set there. And Mr. Mark, Mr. Mark and I just showed up. Oh, okay. Um, for number six. Yep, West Elm Realty Trust, 42 West Elm Street. This is a project change request. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, sir. Joe Mark here on behalf of uh, Dan Ajo. He's got a, a previous commitment. Um, this is the site at 42 West Elm, six acres on the north side. You may recall there was an uh, order of conditions back um, in August of 16. Mm -hmm. There was an appeal, uh, a court case, um, a couple of lawsuits, and they were uh, resolved. Dan is back um, developing this parcel. In the meantime, West Elm Street was paid, and there is a moratorium for activities in West Elm uh, for five years, a couple years left to go. So the extra scrutiny, the measures to keep um, the, tr the work in West Elm Street from degrading the pavement, the floor will fill, all the rest of it, and the construction costs associated with installing the connection to municipal water has proven to be a bit more than uh, Dan wanted to take on. So what he's considering is a uh, private drinking water well. So this location here, uh, street side of the home, uh, works from a Board of Health standpoint. So we're here to you, with you folks tonight to discuss um, a project change. Um, we're inside the buffer zone. Uh, the wetlands is highlighted in green. The buffer zone is here. This is the limit of work that was established in 2016. Okay. So we'll be north of the limit of work. We'll be inside the approved area, uh, 58 feet from the, the uh, BVW edge. Um, but we are different from what was approved. Uh, so it'll just be ago. a temporary disturbance with the installation of the well. Right. Um, and then it's just allowed to regrow back to its... Well, that's in that area that we're going to rework. That's uh, part of that swale to control stormwater okay. from down through there. So it's just uphill of the swale. So there will be activity from that original approved plan. Um, so we'll be at the end of the boulder retaining wall, uphill of the swale. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm fine with that. Question. So we have some of our conditions for, you know, when you drill, collecting muds and stuff like that and containing right so yeah. water and i was just looking at that i was wondering if we had taken that out of the stand but we usually we've, we, we've had we had basically it. kept that condition in a bill some shall be constructed around the proposed well location to contain all the filling spoils spoil should be removed from the site product it's a standard condition the commission has we just when we issued that order we didn't extract it okay yeah. and oh, okay. It, so if you didn't drill a well you could ignore it yeah. right but sure. now now so that we're now, that well. you, now mm -hmm. it's proposed it's sort of it's nice that it's in there instead of having to yep. issue a letter calling that out, you know, so. Yep, so that's condition 44. Correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, no issues with that, sure. Yep. Yeah. That sound okay? Yep. Yep. Great. I'm going to motion to approve the project change request as discussed. Moved. Second, please. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? Okay. okay. Good. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for your time. Okay, Borrego Solar, Zero Wood Street. This is a continuation of a notice of intent for a solar facility. Good evening. Good evening. How's things going up, Borrego? Not bad. Good. Clean. Smart programs working out for you? So far, yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, Can you get right. your names for the Yes, uh, Brandon Smith. Louisa Deering. Um, so yeah, just a quick recap. Last time we submitted, um, the main item that came up with Lucas's review was some wetland uh, line work that didn't seem to be in the correct location. So uh, we had Goddard go up back out to the site and redelineate uh, the wetlands. Um, We've been working on kind of behind the scenes since the last meeting on this new layout. So I wanted to get that in front of you guys. We haven't submitted officially yet, but we are planning on doing that shortly. Um, but generally, what has changed? This is the new layout. This previously we had some panels in this easement. There's an electrical easement, mm -hmm. um, but due to some title issues, we can't place panels in there anyways so that kind of negates some of the, the uh, riverfront yeah the, the, in the riverfront issues we had um, okay. with the last layout a couple other items uh, here we originally were showing some clearing in the 100 foot and 75 foot buffer we pulled out there was a got it Scott identified a potential vernal pool in that area so we this layout has us set back 125 feet from that so okay, we're good. maintaining that buffer down there so the only other item so ba because we pulled out of the riverfront area here we are no longer proposing to restore the soil which we had previously proposed um, but we are leaving this soil restoration proposed and we are still proposing a raise in this <coughs> area this is the hoop house uh, area is kind of got like gravel placed um, so we're proposing to store that um, and place panels here. These, this, this kind of orange area is within the wetland buffer where it will also be within our proposed array. And this blue is within the, the 200 foot riverfront area um, within our array. And we have the, pr the proposed restoration uh, offsets that with a one to one ratio plus some um, based on the 310 CMR um, guidelines. And all those areas where they're proposing work within jurisdiction are currently sort of degraded developed Disturbed. areas, right? So there's not a push out of the tree line anywhere. Okay. Right. Yeah, no, no, this is all existing, no proposed uh, clearing here. Um, there is the, this area is still proposed clearing, but like I said, not in the buffer. So there's 65,000 square feet restoration area? Correct. And that includes the riverfront? Uh, no, so that, so that area, soil. that area is, yeah, that's, I'm sorry, that includes the entire restoration area okay. minus these two areas. So we actually did, I'm not, basically we're not taking credit for the restoration within areas that we're developing um, within the buffers, if that makes sense. So that the restoration that kind of offsetting would be out here and within this upland area. Okay. All right. Uh, looks good to me. Questions, comments from the commission? Uh, <coughs> no. So you still have to provide this to the planning board? Is that the? Yes. Okay. So we'll be resubmitting this to the commission and the, the planning board. Um, along with some responses to Matt's comments. Um, okay. I don't know, Matt, if you want to walk the line again now that it's cause basically the old lines have been taken down. This is a completely fresh mm -hmm. view of the site. So you could get that plan. And I don't know if you intend or want to walk the whole thing or pieces of it, but the, the river here is very hard to flag on the ground. So that's scaled off of aerials. It's one of those kind of 
difficult wetlands to walk in, you mm -hmm. know, uh, for the placement of the river. The wetland lines are all pretty clear. There's some good topographical breaks and slope uh, to look at. Uh, and then we, we've added the vernal pool that wasn't previously shown. And then there, there was a little isolated pocket in here that we, we didn't see, think qualified as a wetland. So that was removed from the plan. And then there was some tightening up in here. Um, and then over here it was more adjusted to the toe slope. Tightening up of the boundary? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. There was a spot in here that, that it was previously flagged pretty high. But it, and, and it's not even going to matter now with the revised layout. So. Okay. Matt, did you have any other? Um, yeah, I was able to look at the wetland bar, especially if you eliminated that isolated wetland in the middle. That'll I'll have to look at that pretty closely. But um, one of the questions that had come up was where the hoop houses are. Two things: one, whether the hoop house work was ever done with any kind of a permit, whether that should have been there to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, so as far as you know, taking credits for restoration of that, but, you know, that'll be something I think to discuss just because it, it may have all been a violation to begin with. Um, and then secondly, what about the, because that's all, all, a good portion of that's within the 100 year floodplain down there, correct? Yes, yeah, this kind of dotted, dashed line is the. So presumably your revise talks about that and yeah. Provides yep, your uh, comments, that's one of the things that we're going to be addressing. We're also going to be submitting to the ZBA uh, for a special permit in order to place those structures in that floodplain. So kind of part of what we'll be submitting to you will also be submitting to the ZBA since calcs. Were you getting to the question of compensatory storage for the posts? Is that what, what you were leaning Well, on just, I mean, it somewhat gets back to the original potential if those hoop houses were there, it was all a crushed stone. If they had already filled a bunch of floodplain for right. that, and you know, I don't, presumably you're taking that crushed stone out, you know, so it, it may be to me going back and looking at when all that was put in, trying to get some feel for was there loss of floodplain how many of years ago, and then can that somehow be restored as, as part of that. And I guess probably taking some consideration of, you know, whatever structures are going in there, I would imagine that the posts aren't going to add up to much, but right. probably probably that calculation should be run yeah, definitely. just to show that yep. you're meeting all the performance standards. Yep. Maybe we can look at the aerial, historical aerials, and kind of get a sense of that, too, when these things all happened. Yeah. We've got some of that. Actually. Okay. They've been there for a while, Don. Like, yeah, we remember. Know. I can share that with you, Scott. Yeah. Some, uh, just from the Google. So it looked like there was some disturbed area in you know, 01 here, and even before 95. And then between 01 and 03, they put the, the hoop houses the in. Hoop houses come in that area. And okay. There was no filings with the commission for Got it. those structures. So looks like the area was disturbed, you know, mm -hmm. didn't have structure. Yeah. So. Okay. All right, so take a look at that, and do you want to continue? Oh, oh, questions, comments from the commission? Sorry. Uh, not at this time. Okay. So we have September 24th, October 8th, October 22nd. Um, I think September 24th would be Thank you. Okay, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Yeah. All right. Thank you. We will Thank get the uh, revised material to you shortly. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Nation 135 Whisper Way in 0129 Wood Street. This is a continuation of a notice of intent for a roadway for a subdivision. Thanks. Good evening. Good evening. So 
and Scott Goddard, Goddard Consulting, and the nation's uh, the applicants are here. I have blow-up sheets individually if we need to look at those. So since the last meeting, we've had um, another go-around with uh, peer review, and we submitted a letter dated September 5th. 2019 that I hope concluded the back and forth on that and included responses to the balance of the Lucas comments as well as revised restoration plans and discussion items to accommodate any inconsistencies that were in the, between the plans and reports and, and all that good stuff. So I think we have a consistent package now before you. Um, it was mostly just looking for some tweaks in the restoration plan, um, some ongoing discussion with the HALT group about what was going to happen within the current Whisper Way area when the, when the road was realigned. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's been sorted out and that's in here as well. Basically, we're going to loam and seed the area with their permission. Uh, yep, I saw that. Okay. And I haven't gotten any additional feedback since then from, from Matt, so I don't know if, if we concluded that back and forth on this further items of interest from Matt. Matt? So I, I did have some time to look at it today um, and I think for the most part it appeared as though the, the last round of comments had all been addressed. I think the only sort of outstanding item that I think the applicant had said was sort of wanted the commission to discuss and, and I would agree with that is um, invasive plants. The, well, the invasive plants and also the reforestation portion of the project, which is about, I think, 26,000 square yeah. feet or so. About half an acre or so. Um, yeah. yeah, in the last round, the applicant had reduced the number of plantings in there over, over what they had previously shown. Um, and they said that was done for, I think their term was economic reasons. Well, I mean, typically, if I re propose a replanting of a, of a native area, especially for trees, I, I usually use a, a parameter of about one tree every um, 525 square feet or 25 feet on center, something like that. We're a little bit less than that, every 22 feet on center, so high, a higher density. That's, uh, to me, a very appropriate, like for a wetland replication area, something like that, plant tree spacing so that they have, can grow up into, into maturity. The Army Corps um, protocol that you had cited was wanted, you know, a couple of, what was it a couple thousand trees per acre or something like that? It, it seemed quite, no, it's quite uh, intense. for forested areas. I believe it was 600 trees per yeah. acre. So it was a pretty, it was a pretty intense, uh, you know, scheme that they were looking for. So I think what I use typically for wetland replication, that there would be no need for, for the buffer forested reforestation area to be more dense than our application area. So I would propose that we keep the density as we have proposed. I think it's 50. So 50 Scott, can I just add, so when you would, in a previous iteration though, you had proposed more trees and then it was reduced. Right. So well, I, I think, I I think, that's that's what's I think there was some, some effort to try to accommodate the, the comments that were made back and forth. And okay. Yeah. So, but I think about, but in terms of appropriateness, I think where we are right now is I mean, I think a potential middle ground on that because I, I think oftentimes the more plantings, the better within reason. You're proposing four to five foot tall saplings in this area. Um, I think a lot of times if you're trying to sort of replant a forest, you have to put in sort of more whip size, very small trees and lots of them and let them kind of naturally compete against one another to you know, form the forest, which is what would more happen in, in a natural situation. Um, so I don't, I don't know how the commission feels about that, of potentially increasing the total number, but maybe reducing the size or maybe making a variety of sizes where you're doing some of the four to five foot size and then kind of filling in with, you know, just basically whips around that and kind of letting that um, do its thing. That's a, a potential sort of middle ground there. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So. How many trees are you proposing in the half acre? 53. 53. And what caliber? Well, we didn't specify a caliber size. It was a height size, four to five feet. So what height? It was a probably a 45 foot height, which is probably like one inch, I would right. guess. Yeah. 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 
four to five feet high. So that's about every 500 square feet, right? So you would have within a 500 square foot area, you'd have one tree every 500 square feet. Yeah. So 600 per acre, 300 per half acre is the Army Corps. Yeah, it's like 700 Six hundred per acre is Army Corps. For right, for, for so, three, so 300 yeah. for half acre. Yeah, yeah I, would, I would like to see that either increased or, as Matt alluded to, you know, plant maybe some larger caliber and then some of the smaller at a higher density. To get more trees in this area? Yeah. I mean, it was originally proposed at a higher number, and you're kind of pulling that back now. I mean, I guess... The a question to you guys is if you wanted to, do you want to add, you know, like the little ones like we have in Mansfield or something like that, you know, we could add any, num any number of those. One in between each or something? That's those whips? Right. I don't know. Something like that. So you could maybe add a second round of the number that we have, but you could double that number. Okay. I think that's fair. Does that mm -hmm. seem reasonable? Yeah. Just okay. That crowds out the mature tree now is competing with the, the next to it. But I guess this takes up if one dies, then there's another one back up underneath it, right? Right. So. Okay. Yeah. So if we can double it, that would be okay. Uh, I think, in with my opinion, that would sound okay to everyone. And that could be conditioned, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. that would, that'll be a condition. And then the last thing was the invasive management. And, you know, I tend to think that, you know, once the COC is signed, um, you know, I don't for, I, I mean, there is a need to continue the invasive management, um, but I don't feel that we need to have the builder um, continue to do that in perpetuity, I think, through the end of the COC, or the closure of the COC sounds reasonable to me. Yeah, it's never been in perpetuity. It's normally like, it might be like a five-year. So if you had a three-year order, you know, and, and it might be like two, uh, you know, two, two extra, additional yeah, years. Yeah, just, just for the, for the invasive. That's if you, if you have invasives, the way we've had standard, then this does have uh, invasives on site. Mm. So, so it would just be two extra years on top of a three-year order. It wouldn't be in perpetuity. Okay. All right. Is that, is that okay with you folks? Two additional years? Well, I mean, it's a request you're making. I don't know. I mean, I, like you said, it's, it's not going to matter. Once we get it under control, then... It shouldn't be an issue, right? Then that's the deal. So, you know, I, I think the, the closure of the COC tends to make more sense. And, because after that, it's infinity time. So two years isn't going to make a big difference on that. Mm. What do you folks think? Well, infinity is obviously absurd. <laughs> well, time goes on. Yeah. That's all I'm saying, right? Yeah, no, I get it. I agree. You're just trying to get the, the plantings that they're doing to establish themselves as best they can and not Correct. drowned out by the forget the invasive so you just, you're doing the best you can you know? yeah and then mother nature's going to take over scott's a little to correct yeah, yeah. I, I think the, through the goc is fine yep. I will do that. Yep. okay um I was kidding, kill all those guys. are the two outstanding issues i believe everything else yeah according to beta and lucas is resolved so I'll open it to questions or comments from the audience. Okay, if I can get a motion to close and approve the notice of intent as discussed with the two special conditions that we just noted as part of this most recent discussion. So moved. And a second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Been a long road. But it sure has. <laughs> Good luck. All the kids down, by the way. Good. The youngest one's already a year old. Time flies. Oh, I was going to say, time flies. Yeah.
and, it's even faster than that. And before you know it, they're going to be 37. No. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know I that. That's a song. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to stop my but there's never a time. I'm done, man. I know. Well, that's a long right? Oh, you're all done completely done? I'll be there tomorrow on my last day, hopefully. Finish grades and loan and all that I'm going to rake it out tomorrow and get to grass growing. I'll take my dog for a while. All right. Okay. So I think that oh. is it for the agenda. Any outstanding items, Don? No. Uh, and I know Barry talked to me about the, the previous um, meeting. Um, he was here just in case you guys had any questions about the uh, the roadway um, mitigation, very old one, and they they've started. Uh, you want to let them know about the memorandum of understanding? Yeah. Well, oh, for halt. I agreed with what he said. We we were in complete agreement, and yep. we have an MOU in process. Yep, I saw that. Okay, Mr. Nation signed it, so, so I think we're working. Good. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. All right. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. All right. If I can get a motion. To we can get a motion to adjourn the meeting. An so moved. In a second. Thank what are we doing? You. All in favor? Ten after eight. Aye. Aye. Oh. Two. It's got to be a wreck. Eight. Eight oh seven. <laughs>